Hey everybody, Taylor with Royal Gorge Anglers coming to you live from Lower Bighorn Sheep Canyon. Gorgeous August 30th morning here. We've got about 500 CFS here in the canyon. As you can see, gin clear conditions. We've had a ton of red quills all morning here. And, um, but the streamer bite has been very, very fun. Kind of welcome to early September fishing. What do you think, Cole? Streamers in all sizes and colors. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. We're having fun out here, folks. It's definitely the start of one of our favorite seasons on the Arkansas Freestone. A uh, lot of great dry dropper fishing ahead of us ahead of us hatch matching you know we've got pseudo cleon beta starting to kick as well um you name it whatever method you like you can come enjoy on this beautiful river 100 plus miles of gold metal water come see us all righty folks thanks so much for joining us on the water there a um, lot of fun out there right now and and wanted to give you a quick look into that um, but also want to uh, quickly talk through some pattern selection uh, as we move into the fall season uh, what you'll notice right away is a clear change into a bit smaller attractor drives i think that's going to be key for you uh, obviously some different hatch matching uh, bugs as well and um, a continuation of some of our attractor nymph fishing um, but also some different um, uh, you know dropper flies um, the biggest thing is just sizing down in the fall season um, fish are still opportunistic on dry dropper but we just got to get a little bit smaller simply because um, the uh Flows are much lower um, than they are in the summer season, you know, currently about 500 CFS and falling uh, in September, October, we'll likely see flows in that 250 to 400 category. Um, so uh, along with that, we also have much clearer water. Uh, Clarity is just gin clear, as you saw earlier, uh, and so sizing down will uh, absolutely be a more productive method for you. Um, let's go through some patterns here quickly. Um, we've got uh, our uh, micro chubbies, which are killer. That's an MFC pattern. That's a size 16 red there. Um, and red, royal, peacock, those are my favorite colors. Um, we've got a water walker here. Water walker is one of my true favorites. Um, and, uh, this guy is red as well. You can see that red underbody there. Um, this is a water walker in purple. Um, one of my true favorite, uh, colors as we move into the fall. What I love about water walkers is they're a little bit more low profile. And I feel like that's, uh, really a, a, a leg up. Um, sometimes you'll see fish spooking from the chubby wings simply because they, are so tall and it kind of casts a shadow on the water sometimes. Uh, Voodoo Doll, uh, another great attractor fly. This is a more natural tan color here. Um, one of my old school favorites is a humpy. This one's a para humpy. Um, so it's got that para post and it's also got a foam cap on the back. So it's gonna float well, support a, a uh, dropper well. Hippie Stomper, one of our tried and trues here um, fishes really well in the fall. Again, red again here. You can see just a continuation of those red colors with uh, the red quill activity being very, very strong and red just a, uh, a great color as the brown trout move into pre-spawn. Um, if we are double nymphing, you know, we're gonna look at our dropper nymphs here in a second. You can either run those under a dry and dry dropper setup so maybe a long drop, 24 to 30 inches, depending on the water you're fishing. Um, but uh, we could also run any of these dropper nymphs under an attractor nymph, okay? If we want to double nymph and get down a little bit. 
Um, let's look at a few of those. Crane fly larvae definitely coming back into play. And I actually, uh, the last several days, saw plenty of crane fly adults flying around. So these guys are hatching. We fished these crane fly larvae in tan and olive. Uh, golden stone flies, they're gonna be pretty immature right now. So I like to uh, throw a size 14 or 16 in my stone fly nymphs. This is a two bit stone, which you'll see repetitively um, in our reports and an iron sally, which is just a great, you know, it doesn't have to be a yellow sally, obviously. This is a size 14 here, so more in that stone fly size range. Moving into hatch matching dries real quick. Um, our uh, red quills are obviously in the forefront right now. We've had really strong red quill activity for about a month now, um, but that is continuing to build um, the last several days seeing uh, red quill spinner falls all the way through the morning and into the midday. This is a CDC um, spinner here. Um, this is a dime piece spinner. This is a newer pattern with kind of this foam cap and um, real high viz. So that's been a, a really nice fly for us. Um, as we move further into the uh, fall season, we're going to see more and more pseudo Cleon betas, our fall blue winged olives. And so uh, mini hot um, is going to be a, a really nice uh, parachute for us. Um, and then our low water um, betas is one of my favorites in the, uh, the fall window. Um, don't forget your caddis, they'll continue to be hatching out there, We're still seeing a fair amount of um, caddis and a variety of caddis. This is a front end loader, so this is an egg layer. Trichos, um, this is a spin doctor, so that's a foam back, trico dry, and you'll definitely see, see some trico spinner falls out there through the fall. Moving into our attractor nymphs and dropper nymphs, uh, whether you run them under a dry or double nymphing, this is a two bit hooker here in red. Um, we've got a fullback Napoleon in brown. These are both gonna be red quill imitations here. More of a red quill attractor, the rubber leg red copper john. Red copper john's been a staple on this river for many years, um, but that, that guy will be an option for you uh, as well uh, as a dropper nymph. Uh, a few attractors here. Um, we've got a waltz worm tied on a jig, and we've got a blowtorch, both in that hair's ear color. Those are gonna be the colors of choice for me, size 14 and 16 in the fall. These are breadwinner flies throughout the year, but will fish very, very well in the fall. Another attractor style nymph, the rubber leg psycho prince. Um, really a, a strong pattern in the fall for us here. Moving into the BWO nymph category, our Slim Shady, um, and this is a split back Slim Shady, Juan Ramirez's uh, BWO. These BWOs need to be 18 to 22. Uh, that's a double tungsten fly, which is nice to drop under a dry. We've got a, a tungsten flashback RS2. That's one of my absolute go-tos in some September, October. I think you can catch fish day in, day out on those. Um, we've got um, obviously some streamers here, folks. You know, we are um, moving into streamer prime time for sure. Um, you know, we've got um, obviously some big, big stuff up top and we've got some smaller stuff down below. It really is going to depend on what rod you have um, and what you're going to be capable to throw out there. But with the brown trout population moving into pre-spawn, um, you know, they will be very, very territorial out there, um, going to be in full chase mode on streamers. Um, we're already seeing that with a drop in water temp. Um, streamer activity has been phenomenal and will continue to be through September and October. This is a time when you can really get out there and find some of those bigger fish that, um, you know, are predatory in nature. They kind of, um, 
will uh, um, be a little bit more willing to play in that pre-spawn window. Um, and as you uh, may or may not know, the Arkansas Freestone is uh, primarily a brown trout fishery. So, you know, 90% of our population, trout population, are brown trout. So um, definitely an optimal method for you in the fall. Um, six weight, seven weight are, you know, definitely what we're focusing on. So, you know, if you do want to get into streamer fishing and you just have a five weight, certainly can, um, help you select a six weight for that second rod or a seven weight. Happy to help on that stuff. Sink tips are optimal. Um, but, um, again, pattern selection wise, very much going to depend on what rod you're throwing. Um, we, uh, are focusing on larger stuff if we've got that six or seven weight to throw it. This is a uh, full size Gallup Silk Kitty and Olive. That's one of my go-tos, especially if I'm running a double, a tandem rig. I'll run that as a lead fly and then a smaller trailer underneath. Um, this is uh, Emma's Mod Maiden. Um, I love the contrast um, and lateral line that this creates. Um, these natural colors are fishing really well currently. Um, so that kind of, uh, cream and white mod maiden, the Gallup Nancy P in natural, um, one of my go-tos, uh, love the movement of that fly, the Heisenberg in black, and then this newer micro, uh, dungeon. Um, this is the smallest in the, the, uh, sex dungeon series, um, those are two core black flies for me, and black will fish really, really well for you. Um, and then uh, some trailers. We've got the Foundia booger, um, just a woolly booger with rubber legs, and that tungsten cone stays down there. Really a durable fly. We've got the Micro Dalai Lama. Um, that's a number 10, and that's probably my go-to dropper if I'm doing a uh, double streamer rig. And then the Thin Mint, which is just a tried and true kind of breadwinner fly for us as well. Um, so quick look at streamers. Um, as we always say, streamer time is any time on the Arkansas River. However, if you were to pick a season, that is September and October. That fall season with uh, pre-spawn uh, pre -spawn brown trout population, that is the optimal time to get after that streamer fishing. Alrighty folks, so hopefully a uh, quick look at um, fly selection is helpful for you. Uh, I know we get a ton of feedback on our, our YouTube channel uh, and video reports that uh, really getting a visual look at patterns and how those representations match up with the bug activity, um, a look at streamers and sizes and, and just a, a brief you know, uh, discussion of rigging really, really helps folks. Um, so glad that that does. And, um, we will obviously continue to run through those, um, you know, our, our fly selection. Uh, I think that's, uh, really, really important to grow as an angler, how we understand bug populations and how to mimic those with our patterns. So, um, again, uh, Fall season on the Arkansas River is is um, you likely one of one of the best seasons, and in my um, opinion, um, the best season. It is my favorite, uh, and so you know, really highly uh, recommend that if you don't fish the fall season um, on the Arkansas or in Colorado, you. Uh, you definitely keep it in mind and try to get as many days on the water as you can in this, uh, this beautiful um, two month window. Obviously moving into September, we have changing uh, foliage. Um, we've got um, elk on the move, bugling. Um, it, and then the fishing speaks for itself. It's just a, a fantastic time to be out there. Uh, the Arkansas offers fantastic wading opportunities, some floating. Um, we'll be finishing up most of our float program here shortly, just with lowering um, flows. Um, 
you know, gin clear water for the most part. Uh, so it's, it, it's just a beautiful time. You know, the air's crisp, cooler, um, you know, we're moving out of those hot days, you name it. Um, if you have any questions about anything that we've covered here today, please do call us 888-994-6743. You can hit us up on our chat line on royalgorgeanglers.com, or you can email us anytime info at royalgorgeanglers.com. Thanks so much for viewing here today. Again, my name is Taylor, uh, and uh, it is my pleasure uh, to be here with you. We hope to see you in the fly shop uh, or on the water sometime soon. Uh, remember, Rogue Gorge Anglers is the oldest fly shop and guide service and only Orvis endorsed outfitter on the Arkansas River. Please do give us a call if you'd like to get a guide trip here. We do have a few days left in the fall. Uh, we would love to host you for a day on the water. Um, we hope you enjoy your next uh, day on the water and please let us know how we can assist.